Okay guys, so I have orders flying in for the uh, 82XV920 Virago. So uh, I actually disconnected the engine and lifted the bike, actually pushed the bike off of the engine so I could start working on that. Um, I pulled the starter out of the engine on the uh, XV500 Virago and realized all the oil just came out because the starter is located pretty low in the engine so it's different than the uh, Maxim because it's on the top of the bottom of the crankcase so I figured let's try and catch the oil on this one when I start working on it uh, so let's show you quick where the oil filter is located on the Viragos you got a couple bolts here and there's a metal thing connecting there's a metal bracket or something here so uh, actually disconnected that but pulled the bolts out. That's an Allen key. You'll have to find the right size. I think I used I used one that worked. It's probably the same size as these. I would guess maybe a six or an eight or a five or a four. I don't know. You'll figure it out. But um, this is how Yamaha on the Virago does their oil filter. So take those three bolts out, pull this cap off, and this is pretty cruddy but thought you'd like to see it. There is a gasket, actually. I think this red gasket doesn't go there because there's a black gasket there. The red gasket probably does go on the end. So that probably sits right here on the edge. I don't know how that's gonna stay there. Yeah, looks like that goes right there to seal that. But here's your cap for your oil. I guess that's a passage there. It's all kinds of crap in my oil it's kind of gross but here's your filter so that's your cap pretty cool got an order for that so i'm going to take that off got to set that over here with the bolts you'll see them here in a second so there's that metal brace or bracket that i told you about i don't know what that is but it's on the bottom and then here's your three bolts you can see they're all different so make sure if you take them off that you know which one goes in where. All right, back over to the bike. I'll pull out this filter and uh, we'll probably end up pulling the starter off because we'll have to test that, see if it even works. Here's your filter. You can see that's disgusting. That is so bad. So if I was gonna ever res resurrect this engine, it definitely needs a new filter. Definitely needs oil change. That's going to go in the bin. That is disgusting. And then our oil is black as night. So, did that. Now we're going to have to flip it over. Hopefully I can catch it in this pan. And get the uh, cover on the other side off. I have an order for the stator cover. And the stator. So... Good job, Yamaha. You're coming apart. Now I can easily start pulling this stuff off. It's not too hard. I have to bend this back here to turn out that, but that's no big deal. And then we can separate the frame. There's the upper part of the frame still connected to the uh, handlebars and forks. And then we have the rear part of the frame. And this is the swing arm. So all that stuff needs separated, and then we can list it for sale. So I'm gonna drain this and see if I can't get the starter stator cover off the other side. Guys, obviously it's the next day with the XV920 Virago, and all the bolts came out clean on this cover. I was able to get the timing cover off. I believe that's what this is, because there's your, you can crank the engine over that way. I'm gonna have to try that, see if it cranks. Uh, I, I guess this is where you'd line up your timing line and uh, I'll show you that later if I can figure it out but the one bolt that wouldn't come off I tried drilling it out in the middle putting in an easy out and then I cut a slot and I cut a giant slot I hammered a screwdriver in there I used a giant adjustable wrench on the end of the screwdriver and pop finally she came loose so all I can say is that was the worst screw 
I don't know. Was it the worst screw I've ever done? It's possible. Quite possibly the worst screw I've ever had to work with. But it's actually going to come out clean. And I don't have to drill it out. And that's all we need to know. So, thank God that's done. There would be your oil window. There's your gear indicators, neutral, one, two, three, four, five. So this only has five gears. And uh, that's about it for now. I'm gonna see if I can get this thing off. But first I wanna turn the engine, make sure it is free. All right guys, fun fact. Uh, if uh, you're looking at this arrow and you try to turn that cap that was here in that direction, uh, you're gonna break it off. I literally sheared it off of the threads. So I was able to fish that out. That's not a problem. So I broke that cap. Sorry to whoever might have wanted that. But if you're trying to pry this whole cover off, you're gonna notice this has to come off because that's linkages in the way. And then there's another couple five millimeter bolts holding it in. So I need to pull that off and I had to get, loosen these up. Don't shear them off or don't round them off because there's no way you're gonna get those out. Just, uh, just a tip. All right, folks, if you're here to see the stator and the rotor, this is what you're looking for. You're gonna lift this thing straight up and looks like our uh, clutch, uh, it looks like the clutch actuator. I don't know what exactly you call it, but looks like that comes free. And then, uh, yeah, we're not in a clean environment, but cruddy oil everywhere. So that's your rotor. This has magnets and that magnetizes your stator, which actually looks really pretty. I think our stator's in great shape. So this is a stator connected to the whole cover. And uh, what, what is going on? Looks like we have a sheared wire here. That's not a good thing. I uh, wonder why that is. Hmm. I don't see the other end of it. But, yeah, that's unfortunate. So, I don't know where that goes at the moment. Obviously, it's not going anywhere. But then we have what's probably a ground wire. Something down here. I need to disconnect that. And then this whole thing will be free to move and go about. So anyway, yeah, this is really kind of interesting. I don't know why this is sheared off there. This bike was abandoned, basically. Sat for a while, but uh, at least our stator looks good. This wire could be reattached to wherever it needs to be. Looks like our gears look really nice. Everything looks brand new inside here. So that looks pretty good for a bike that's been sitting for a long, long time. Um, so that's what I wanted to do. I'm gonna disconnect this wire, take this whole sucker into where it needs to be. And uh, as I said, I'm not seeing anything burnt here. Looks pretty nice and decent. So, job well done. I will disconnect this and uh, that's it for now. Have a great one. I'll see you in the next one. We could probably pull the starter out. The starter actually looks beautiful. See now, when you, you shift your gears here, where does the starter attach? I've never seen the inside of the starter here. So, I don't know. Maybe you know what you're looking at. Starter gears look beautiful. Here we are in the final stages of teardown. Uh, just found the nut on top of the steering stem here is a 22. So I'm gonna loosen that up and see if I can get this whole thing free. I think once I get that off, then I get into the nitty gritty and I can actually disconnect the whole front end. Now here we are. I'll never be able to torque them down to spec, but when I go and take these captive nuts off, this is a locking nut on top of this nut, and then this keeps all your bearings in place. Uh, I just use a screwdriver and a hammer, 
and just tap on it and they come off just like any other bolt would so there's that there's that and i think it was honda this is usually part of this dust cover here that's usually all one and then uh here's where you make a mess if you don't catch your ball bearings this is going to come off and all the ball bearings are going to fall out and then i can drop this through the frame and we'll be disconnected i should have showed you that it was kind of cool all the ball bearings fell out of there when i pulled that cap off and now we have ball bearings that are going to fall out the bottom see i'm hiding in there nope, I'm starting to fall out already so right now this frame can be lifted off of the front end if this was upside down i could just lift it out but this is your steering uh what makes your steering smooth if these things don't aren't uh, greased up right or if they are out of round or out of place or busted in any way that's not going to work so when you rebuild your steering you're putting in new bearings here and a bearing up top 